I was first chair at Juilliard. You shit. Hi, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. It's Ty over here with yet another struggle review. Here to finish with my last impressions of Ratchet. Here to let you guys know if the show got any better for me as I watched it from episode five all the way to the end. If you guys watched my first review, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. But before we get there, before we start talking as to why, I'm going to need you guys to go and subscribe. So I'm going to give you a minute. So now that we've got all of that out of the way and you guys have subscribed to see more of me, let's get into the shit show. Huh, I'm going to just kind of go because episode to episode was just, it was nothing that she wanted to follow. It was nothing that I was too invested in. So I'm just going to go kind of from character to character and talk about what I hated because <laughs> I didn't really like much of anything. First up, of course, is Miss Mildred, Mildred Ratchet, Miss Sarah Paulson. Hmm. Our angel of death. Uh, not one redeemable quality. I really didn't like how towards the end of the episodes, we decided to make Mildred likable. Where? Who is she likable for? So far, all we've seen Mildred do is murder people be conniving, blackmail, lying. Nothing to make me go, hey, I'm Team Mildred. No, but towards episode five, six, seven, and eight, Mildred is just supposed to come off as such a relatable character when she's a murderer and a manipulator. Okay. <laughs> then we spent a lot of time on Edmund and Miss Dolly, you know, before she's murdered. And they come, you know, from this whole episode five when they're, you know, it's all about this dance. And Edmund deviates from the plan and falls in love with Dolly and murders people and runs away all because... You kissed Dolly and she jacked you off. That's it? That's why we're supposed to care? Okay. <laughs> but we spent a lot of time trying to make Dolly look like, trying to make us kind of sympathize with Edmund. Like, oh my God, who's the real crazy person here? She's killing a chicken. She murdered a chicken. She shot Miss Sex in the City, Gwendolyn in the show. Who's really crazy here? Oh, poor Edmund. I, w I hope Edmund's okay. What? Why would I give about Edmund? No matter what you try to portray Dolly as, very first episode, Edmund murdered four priests. And then we get this whole scene of them running and getting in the car and like they just went so far. It seemed like they literally drove and ran maybe the equivalent of five miles to outrun these police so they can be free and frolic and we're gonna run away and go over the border and what? 
Then they get, you know, to this abandoned barn and all of a sudden Edmund turns into this angel who's never heard a fly. Why they say she never heard a fly. All right, with the get the psycho out of here. You guys can never touch psycho. And then we're supposed to have all of this remorse when Dolly is shot when they have to surrender to the police because all we've seen them do is kill a chicken and have sex in his barn. There was no character buildup for anybody in this show. I'm convinced they just didn't care. Like maybe something happened with COVID. They didn't care. They didn't care. But yeah, Dolly got shot. Who, who cared? Okay. And Evans captured yet again. But we get this whole manipulator, Mildred, because, you know, prior we've murdered the hitman and we're now black blackmailing Dr. Hanover. And at this point, Mildred has shown zero interest in Gwendolyn, Gwendolyn who is just electrically attracted to Mildred for what I don't know. Mildred showed no interest. Mildred, Mildred did any nothing that was just so fabulous to make her go, oh my God, like I just I can't live without this woman. We're connected. I can feel it in my soul. Besides that one scene of her telling Vincent, I'm gonna call him Vincent. His real name is Vincent. The mayor, hey, don't put your hand there. I don't I don't like being touched. Oh, she's one of us. I'm in love. Okay. <laughs> she's electric attraction whatever but she manipulates her all of a sudden after this murder has happened and I want I would love to go out let's go out let's go to the dance let's go hang out let's go to this puppet show after she shot and she's at like is this the only hospital in town she gets whole ass shot and she's in here in this mental institution healing okay but we go to this puppet show that's supposed to reenact Edmund and Mildred's childhood. And we see all these heinous things happening. There's beating, there's incest going on, there's nudity, there's children in this audience as well as adults. And Mildred is there in shock. We have this, this is like the most, maybe one of the more interesting scenes of the show. It was very creative the way they did it. But they never actually let us know if Mildred was imagining this in this puppet show or if this was actually happening. So at this point, it just looks like, is Mildred crazy or is the whole audience crazy? Why would you let your children watch? Okay. But Mildred sits and confesses who she is, who Edmund is to Gwendolyn, who you would think at this point, we're just going to get up and run and all this time this woman has been lying to you but there's just such a love for each other that she just doesn't care Gwendolyn Miss Sex in the City Miranda is portrayed as like some type of love crazy naive teenager it was so unbelievable like it wasn't even funny it was not even funny. But, you know, of course, you know, she was shot. She was shot and we were supposed to care. And at this point, I was with her for, I'm done with Mildred. She's not giving me any anything back. She doesn't want to be with me. Let me go on my way and find someone else. I was all for Gwendolyn Miranda going off and finding someone else to spend her happily ever after with. You know, being separated from her gay black husband that no one's going to care about in the 1940s. But okay. No, we still come back. We still are manipulated by Gwendolyn because we're shot. It's put a little sprinkle, you know, put a little icing on the cake. We have cancer. We don't have to throw some cancer in there. Okay. And then we have Dr. Hanover, who I, for the most part, thought had a very good chance at being a, re a redeemable interesting character because here we have the story arc of a doctor who's not only 
a little bit insane, but he's a drug addict, but he believes so much in his treatment and has convinced all these people around him. I, I, was, I was like, I'm really interested to see where he goes from here to maybe episode eight. Let's see what happens with him because people even now, because you know, with the practices back then, that was already a whole thing. People even now can do heinous things and trial heinous things under the umbrella of, well, I'm a doctor. I know what's best. I know what treatment they need. I want to see where he actually took this. But not only is he blackmailed by Mildred and childishly <laughs> put out from his damn hospital, he's murdered? Not by the hitman, not by Mildred, not by Sharon Stone, by Charlotte Wells, who we are going to get to because I'm saving her for last. Murdered by Charlotte Wells. So we went through all of that. Like I was even a little bit interested in him at the dance when, you know, he took a little bump at the dance, was out dancing crazy sweating i'm tired of people controlling me i wanted to see where he went with that you're a drug addict trying to give treatment and diagnose people and also save people that could have went so many different directions but we didn't go in any direction besides him being murdered by a patient that he was trying to treat <sighs> okay We had Sharon Stone, people. Sharon Stone, who gave every bit of the performance that she gave in Catwoman, which was which is bad. Catwoman's bad. It was bad. It was so bad. They could have had this whole story with the exact same dynamics and not have shown Sharon Stone or her son at all. They were unneeded, unnecessary, miscast, and unutilized. I was like, why are they there? Just for her son to set up a plot with whoever this, the cabana boy, I don't know, to murder the mother when she actually gets Hanover's severed head, that Mildred, the angel of death, the redeemable character who we're supposed to care about all of a sudden towards the end of the series. He murders her. Well, has her murdered just for her to leave all of her stuff to the monkey, all of his inheritance to the monkey which we already knew she was going to do before they read her will and said it didn't need to be there if y'all were going to do this to sharon stone then we have the wonderful nurse betsy bucket who i loved the best character that this show had to offer but they completely changed her character and her story arc towards the end of the show We get to the dance. We finally get that date, which was funny. Episode five was very funny. The dance was very funny. Her being so blind to the fact that he was completely disgusted with her. <laughs> but it was good. And even with the way he talked to her at the dance, and you know, if you ever talk to me, you know, I'm going to strike you. I still cannot believe that finally, everything she thought about Nurse Mildred has come into fruition. She's got all the information she needed, courtesy of the throw throwaway crazy flapper, hotel attendant. And she just uses it and keeps the information and becomes best friends with Mildred. Where? Where does that make sense? I was waiting for Ish to pop off and for me to get something from the series and for Mildred to have a whole strife with the nurse. But no, they join forces and she just forgets about Dr. Hanover, the love of her life for the many years that she's been there, that she's devoted and brought the paper and flowers and an eclair to damn near every day that she's worked there. We just forgot about that. Forgot about his murder and took over the hospital. We were appointed to take, a, take over a hospital with not one license physician in sight no doctors 
a whole hospital full of nurses, treating people, diagnosing people, caring for people. Where, where, where's the logic in this show? American Horror Story has been a billion things over the rainbow, but there was always a sense of logic in everything that happened. There was a sprinkle of, I can, I can see this. Nowhere. This, these things in this show are not happening. They, they don't make sense. And then <sighs> we also have a character that I was liking because he was the only, besides, you know, Nurse Betty before she, yeah. The only redeemable character in the show who logically made sense. Nurse Hulk the burn victim that I was so annoyed because it was this running gag of well just do it because I said so where else are you going to work who else is going to hire you with a face like that first of all first of all burned or not Hulk was fine Hulk was fine Hulk could have got it burns and all so that whole concoction of where are you gonna go you do who, who's gonna be with you with a face like that the advances you know making to um mildred even though she i'm starting to accept that i might enjoy the comfort of other women oh sarah paulson was anybody else bothered by sarah paulson's wig like it was like they couldn't put a couple of hair. Okay. But Hulk, I'm like, if y'all were gonna try to sell us on Hulk being this disgusting burn victim, like this hang, like, oh my God, I, I could never. Y'all could have le at least made him murder house, Dennis O'Hare, Larry burn victim burnt. You remember murder house, the ghost who was like half burnt and face was all and he would show up and just pop up out of nowhere and scare the sh y'all could have went that far but you want to give me half handsome face and half a little little burnt with the eye he still could have got it do better and then last but not least my piece of resistance charlotte webb charlotte wells Charlotte Wells, played by Sophia Okodine, Okodine, whomever. She was so wonderful in Hotel Rwanda. As soon as I saw her, I saw Hotel Rwanda and a little bit of Secret Life of Bees. I saw a credible actress. But here... Violinda. Why? Why? Why did every single credible act actor it, why did it all go out the window for this series? Why? I do understand she was trying to portray a person suffering with, you know, multiple personality disorder, identity disorder, whatever. Hitler, Hitler's coming. He's going to shoot you. Throw the chair. Ha! Ah, why? She was trying her best to give us all of her James McAvoy split, which is here. It came across so unauthentic. It was very laughable. And I don't think they were going for laughable, but it was very funny. Then she, she murders, admits herself to the hospital, first of all. Murders <laughs> Dr. Hulk, you know, him with his, uh, you are getting very sleepy. <laughs> Hypnosis machine. I love when he tried to use that on uh, Nurse Betsy and she was like, what? What? We going out. I bought a dress. We're going out. He's like, ugh, it's not working. <laughs> 
But we have that, and it's just supposed to have worked on her at this dance, and he's the only one who can help me. He believes in me. Get out of here. Get out of my face. Ha, ha. Hitler. No. All of that happening, and her whole arc is murdering him you know after he's you know rolled in the car and you're going because we're just going to release this patient which it looked like i don't know if it was supposed to look like mildred set that up all along like yeah you can go with him she's crazy and he doesn't even we all knew that she was crazy she clearly was off her rocker which is how i don't know how we went from murdering him you know of course she took the head off with the head put her on a bus to mexico her coming back and being able to roam free through the hospital. See, this is the, the shit that happens when there's no licensed physicians around and you put Nurse Betsy in charge. Nurse Bucket. <sighs> Comes in, rummaging through, and I'm the doctor. I'm Dr. Hanover. Since when? Is that just something you absorb because you murdered him? Okay, but we're Dr. Hanover. We get a gun, we're shooting people left and right. We have all these guards who don't seem to have any, any sense or any weapons or any. When we saw our guards with weapons, with shotguns, hovering over Edmund all the time. You know, when he got to go into this magical barn that served no, absolutely no purpose. Hell, I at least thought he was going to get in there and try to do some Gross shit with some animals or something. I don't know. Something. Give give me something. <laughs> I'm tired. It's horrible. The show sucks. Get in there. Takes over. She's killing people left and right. Gets Edmund out. What? You thought you were giving me James McAvoy, but you weren't. You were just giving me bad actress. Laughable. Then we're left. I would have even accepted this being Mildred's plan all along and her luring um, Charlotte into the hospital to do that. But no, she's a whole separate entity now. Because remember, at this point, Mildred is redeemable. She's hoping. She's even so thoughtful enough to set up a whole plot to have her brother sedated instead of electrocuted. We love Mildred at this point. Where? Mildred has been a whole conniving murder biatch this whole series. Why would we like her now? Why would Samantha, Samantha, <laughs> Miranda be in love with her now? Why? Is it just me or is it Cynthia Nixon, Miranda look? Is she that age now? I just felt like they made her look so much older in this show as far as her makeup and her look. I'm like, is that age make makeup or is she just, has she just gotten that much older? I don't know. Drop a comment. But we're left with him just escaping with Charlotte because she felt like coming back to get him because now she's Dr. Hanover or he's one of her personalities. Then we get these dream sequence and oh, oh God, I woke up. It, it's, it's not real. My brother, he's coming after me. It was already shaky and laughable of her coming. Mildred's whole story arc this whole time is I've got to get to my brother because I told him I would come back for him. Why? That doesn't even seem like there was enough of a childhood connection for her to want to come back for him. So, no. But uh, we're left with the allure of there possibly being a part two of her coming after Edmund. I don't care to see it. I don't want to see it. If you see this show, don't watch it. The best thing about this show is... The intro. So in closing remarks, unless you have a fetish for badly written, badly acted, no character development, harsh bullshit. It was horrible. The show sucked. Unless you like that, 
don't watch the show don't watch the show don't waste your time just don't be drawn in by the allure of fabulous faces fabulous people that you know can act because none of it's here now if it's just me and you feel like this show was amazing and i'm missing something drop a comment below and tell me that if you agree with me and you think this show is shit drop a comment below and tell me that but that's it for ratchet i do not plan on viewing part two because you know they had to leave that allure of i'm coming for you this time like we're supposed to care about that because this whole show her goal was to set her brother free and get him out of that jail and we're gonna run away together because i left you that one time 40 years ago because mildred looks every bit of 50 and her brother looks like he's in his 30s but okay <sighs> nobody cares to see a part two i don't if and when it does come on i will not be reviewing it it's nothing i feel like it's good if it comes on and it's freaking amazing then you'll see it but for what it's worth just watch the intro the intro was amazing but that was my review on ratchet i hope you guys enjoyed it i see you guys for my next video bye